Do you feel drawn to learn more about witchcraft and the occult, but feel lost on where to start? Then welcome to Get In Loser, We're Doing Witchcraft, a podcast all about what it means to be a witch and where to get started on your journey. Join us as we navigate through various witchy topics and share what we have learned about the craft. So get in, witches, and let's talk about manifesting prosperity. So for this episode, we're kind of building on our manifestation episode we're going to be talking about ways to manifest prosperity. And if you haven't already checked out our manifestation episode, which is episode 11, if you didn't know, go back and give it a listen, because in that episode, we did a deep dive into what manifestation is, how to practice it, the law of attraction, and so much more. Just to generally sum up everything on episode 11, manifestation is the practice of thinking aspirational thoughts with the purpose of making them real. It's the art of bringing something into your life through magic and positive thinking. Pretty much any spell that you're drawing something to yourself can be considered a manifestation spell. Manifesting prosperity and abundance is not just about money. I think a lot of people assume that when you're talking about prosperity, it just has to do with material objects, and that's not the case at all. Manifesting prosperity also includes manifesting happiness and joy, success in all you pursue, to include goals that you've set, job opportunities, and luck. And it can also relate to love, friends, whatever you want in your life to be so abundant that it overflows prosperity and abundance relates to all of these. And it can also be about money too. And prosperity bowls can help to create real change in the size of your pockets. And this can come in many different ways from increased financial opportunities, finding money in your home that you thought you've lost, finding loose change and money on walks, but it can also manifest in ways like lighting a fire in you to sell things that you didn't need and no longer serve you. So general tips for manifesting abundance, some of these things are going to be similar to what we've discussed in our manifestation episode, but these tips are a great refresher because sometimes we can get caught up in thinking, well, this isn't working or feeling like you want to give up because you don't see any signs of your prosperity manifesting. As we have discussed throughout many of our episodes, there's a power in words, a power in saying your words out loud and a power in positive thinking. We've discussed this already, but thoughts create beliefs and your beliefs create your reality. So you're guaranteed to stay in the same place if you continue to recycle the same thoughts and beliefs. So the base of manifestation is to just choose a proper goal that's attainable within a reasonable amount of time, be confident that your manifestation will come to be, and be willing to accept the consequences should you have unexpected results. And a big part of manifestation is where your focus goes, your energy goes. So if you're focused on what is limiting you, you're going to miss opportunities that are out there for prosperity. And I'm just going to say a really quick caveat. If you hear any noise in the background of kids screaming, (laughs) I promise no one's being abused. We back up to a field that just opened up in my neighborhood and there are kids out there all the damn time and it is annoying as fuck. Look, so sorry about the noise. You have kids. <laughs> I have a cat that just ripped up all the carpet outside my bedroom door, which is you fine because we're getting ready to replace it. <laughs> right. <laughs> just what the heck? <laughs> she was very mad that I was recording without her. Mm-hmm. She's like, excuse me, mom. Let me just rip out this carpet here. Yeah, so you know how job. angry I am. Like, thank you, but you were just helping me, Freya. So thanks. Thanks a lot. It was Nike this time. <laughs> oh, it was Nike. Oh my God. Nike, come on, man. Tolkien is my good boy. He's just like, oh, mom's busy. I'll come back later. And then the other two are like, let me in. That, that is my my two girl cat. Literally, I knew it was a 50-50 chance. It was either Freya or Nike. <laughs> like I just knew it. So also with manifestation, like attracts like, and this incorporates energy. If your vibration is low, you will attract low vibrations. So an example of this is if you're feeling shame or grief, fear, disdain, any of these feelings, these are all low vibrational energies. So you want to try to work through those, whether that be through therapy or shadow work. If it's not like a super intense thing, please seek therapy if you're feeling depressed. For sure. Um, (laughs) But whatever you need to do to work through those lower vibrations, do that so that you can start attracting what you want. 
And another big thing when it comes to manifestation is believing that you already have everything that you already need and want. Be who you want to be now through your thoughts, beliefs, and energy and staying open. The universe works in weird ways. As I mentioned earlier, abundance and prosperity may not appear to you in the form of physical cash, it may show up in different opportunities that have the potential for abundance. So just staying open, keeping an open mind so that you can receive any gifts from the universe. And then the last thing, being thankful. Definitely be thankful for whatever the universe throws your way. When it comes to the money portion of manifesting prosperity, money magic is sometimes surrounded by the stigma of greed, but the reality is that greed means greed. Money doesn't mean greed. The reality is that money is a necessity in every person's life and it provides stability and comfort. And a good way to look at abundance and money magic is if you have an abundance of something that you've been worrying about, for instance, money, once you have that, you are no longer having to focus all of your energy on attaining that. So you're able to focus your energy on other places in your life that need balance. Before working any form of money magic, you need to think about why you want the money that you're requesting. This will be very personal to you specifically. So you need to just write them down on a piece of paper, fold them up and seal them with wax. Or if you have washi tape in a corresponding color to prosperity, seal it with that. These can be things like stability, your dream life. If money wasn't an object, what would that life look like? Write that down on a piece of paper or maybe something like just to spoil yourself, to spoil your loved ones, to vacation freely and comfortably so that you can go and just kind of enjoy your time and not have to think about, can I spend this extra money on this trinket that I want or this tour that I want to go on or something like to pay for uh, meaningful knowledge, like taking a class or maybe that's actually going to school and getting a degree. So any of these could be examples of what you would write down on a piece of paper and then seal it up. So some symbols of prosperity could be the Chinese prosperity dragon. I'm not a hundred percent sure on the pronunciation of this one. I tried looking it up and there were several different (laughs) versions of how to say it. So I'm just going to say one of them. And if you know what it is, cool. It's a Ganesha statue, gold coins, a gold box, Frog figurines are considered prosperity symbols, the Lakshmi statue, the lion figurine, a money tree, or pig figurines are also considered prosperous little symbols, which I thought was adorable. Some colors would be royal blue, purple, and turquoise are Jupiter's colors, and they symbolize success influencing people in high places, good fortune, and new beginnings. Gold, yellow, and light orange are the sun's colors, and they're used for health, wealth, success, and victory. Gold also brings strength, while yellow brings information, news, and sometimes useful gossip, which I thought was kind of funny. And then pink, green, and copper are Venus's colors. They're the colors of love, but they're also used for money, prosperity, growth, and fertility. Some gods for prosperity, you have Bel, Brahma, Hernanos, Frey, the Ganesha, again, don't know if I'm saying it right. Jupiter, Sucellus, and Sai Shen are all considered prosperity gods across different pantheons, obviously. And then for goddesses, you have Abundantia, Anu, Apona, Fortuna, Habandia, Lakshmi, Rosmerta, and Sarasvati. Crystals for prosperity are amber, adventurine, black tourmaline, emerald, citrine, clear quartz, green tourmaline, jade, malachite, smoky quartz, and tree agate. And then also you can use tiger's eye, chrysoprase, could be saying it wrong. (laughs) Look, we do our best. (laughs) Chrysoprase. I don't have this stone in my collection, but even if I did, I probably couldn't say it. Um, So chrysoprase or chrysoprase, cinnabar, and epidote. So plants and herbs for prosperity, you can use allspice, basil, bay leaf, calendula, cedar, chamomile, cinnamon, sink foil, dill, elder, jasmine, nutmeg, orange, patchouli, peppermint, pine, sage, sassafras, and verbena. That's a lot. Um, Also alfalfa, avocado, cabbage, chervil, clover, coriander, 
lettuce, mint, poppies, and parsley. And I found some cool things about some of these. So gamblers used to wash their hands in chamomile tea before playing any card or dice game because it was believed to improve their chances of winning, which I thought was pretty cool. And then basil, the scent of basil on the skin is believed to draw financial opportunity to the wearer and prostitutes in Spain actually bathed in basil and rubbed their body with basil to attract customers. So you know what? I'm going to roll around in basil, but do not it. for prostitution reasons. Yeah, do it. I don't want to attract customers, but I would like money, please. Let's do I also it. I love the way basil smells. So days of the week for prosperity are Sunday Thursday or Friday. So if you're going to work any prosperity manifestations, these are great days to do it. It's also encouraged to work prosperity spells and manifestations on a waxing moon so that your prosperity grows alongside the moon throughout its cycle. And the primary number associated with prosperity and abundance is two because it encapsulates the concept of doubling, which is kind of cute. I like that. I do like that. And the planets associated with manifesting prosperity are Jupiter because it's the planet of good fortune, the moon because it's a planet of magic and fulfilled wishes, and Mercury because the Roman god Mercury is involved with prosperity and finance. So when working any prosperity manifestation, your primary goal should be to find balance between spiritual wealth and material wealth. Make sure you aren't creating your own psychic roadblocks and obstacles when it comes to your prosperity. Saying or believing things like money corrupts, you don't need money to be happy, money is the root of all evil, the best things in life are free, any type of iteration like that can create barriers to your own prosperity because your attitude towards money. So I found this quote by an author named Sarah Prout, and she has a book on manifestation, but she says to choose the vibration that you are offering the universe in each and every present moment. And if you can't choose, then trust and surrender to the power of the universe that always has your back. And I thought that was really cool and so fitting to what we're talking about. Money, spells, and prosperity magic help you project for the wealth needed and help you to accept the reality of money at the same time. So be able to believe beyond what you can see while being happy where you are right now. Then get specific on your desired amount and how it will manifest. So write down your intentions, being as specific as possible. The universe loves and thrives on specific requests. So dive into the details of things like the people, the places, the experiences that you're wanting to manifest. Think of ways that you can joyously generate more income. So you don't want to just like work some job that you're unhappy in to have the money. What are some ways that you can go out right now and be happy doing something that's going to make you money? This could be something like selling art, selling homemade items, or, you know, if you like to bake, maybe baking and selling bread or jams, maybe walking or babysitting pets or babies, if that's your thing, doing something that like actually brings you joy while making money. Surround yourself with things that will also inspire you. So you need to create a space that's going to inspire action where you will actively start to participate in the vibration of that thing. Read a book on success, watch uplifting videos on YouTube. Inspiration is almost always free and you can almost always find it around you. You can create a vision board, which we've talked about in several different episodes. So you can do that electronically. You could you know, go and buy a poster board from Walmart and cut out magazine pictures and words and put it on there, like however it works for you. Keep track of what you spend versus what you'd like to spend. So create two separate lists. The first list is going to be things that you have to spend money on each day. And your other list is your abundance list. So visualize yourself making purchases from your abundance list to help expand your prosperity mindset. And then most importantly, just make sure that you feel worthy. By feeling unworthy, you're also creating those barriers that I talked about earlier. And then you can use affirmations as well, which we have also talked about numerous times on the podcast. There's so many different ways you can do this, but one of the easiest methods is using abundance affirmations. So short, powerful statements to call prosperity, wealth, and financial gain to your life. So you can chant them, making a ritual out of them. And we've talked about that on previous episodes. So Mm -hmm. go listen, but you can also combine them with like meditation 
And it's important to know that the more thought you give them, the greater chance they'll manifest for you. So some affirmations that you can use are things like, I am open and receptive to all the wealth life offers me. I am surrounded by wealth. I live an abundant life. I am prosperous and successful in all that I do. I am a magnet for abundance, prosperity, and good fortune. You can also say something just like, I create my own financial situation or I deserve prosperity. It doesn't have to be anything crazy and long and drawn out, just something simple and quick that you're going to remember to say often to put you in that right like manifestation mindset. Another super easy thing to do is a candle magic spell. And as you guys know, I love a good candle magic spell. So what you can use is a green candle or really any candle that calls to you. But green is often considered a symbol of money. So if you hold a green candle in your hands, you charge it with your desire. If prosperity or abundance is something that you're wanting, you can even carve a sigil in it. Or you can hollow out its base and then fill the base with herbs, some of the herbs that we've already discussed. And then if, say, you're using a tea light candle, say you don't have a green candle and all you have is like a little tea light candle from Ikea or Yankee candle or wherever, take the tea light out of the tin, pack the tin with some herbs that we discussed and then put the tea light candle on the top of it and then burn the candle and then think of the affirmation that you know we just discussed and kind of chant that affirmation over the candle or visualize the affirmation coming into fruition as the candle burns you can also create a money bowl or a money jar if you need examples of this if you go on youtube and put in money manifestation bowl there are so many people that like post their videos of their little money bowls and jars but just remember to like make these your own these should be personal to you your needs your desires things that resonate with you when it comes to the symbols that you're using so basically you use a bowl or a jar and you add things like coins cash any of the correspondences that we've listed or correspondences that might mean something to you in your situation. You can use keys dressed with road opening oils so that they unlock future opportunities. You could use shells, anointing oils, or pendants and charms that symbolize luck just for a boost in your bowl. Something that I found kind of interesting is that you can use rabbit bones as rabbits are tied to wealth, prosperity, and fertility. Turtle figurines, right? Turtle (laughs) figurines because they're slow and steady. So you want that to come in like steadily when it comes to your prosperity. The King of Wands tarot card is action based. So you want to use that to make things happen or for movement. And then if you need a quick turnaround, coffee is considered a great item to use for that quick turnaround for some fast cash in an emergency. And then rice is something that's good for abundance. So you can add like uncooked rice to your bowl, or um, I've seen a couple of people use a bowl of rice next to their prosperity bowl with a corresponding candle in the rice, or they'll add like an incense to it. There's all kinds of things you can do. Again, this is something there's no like one right way to do this. It's very personal to you. When using a money bowl or a jar, you need to re and cleanse the bowl over time and work with your bowl continuously. You can add more money as you have it, but they're meant to have things added and removed throughout their working. It's supposed to be a flow. So things should be coming out and going in pretty regularly. If you add your money bowl to your altar, get a candle in one of the corresponding colors for prosperity and wealth. And then you can even carve something like your country's currency symbol into the candle. And then pick a day of the week. Like we talked about Thursday, Sunday, and what was the other day? There was a third day. I can't remember. But basically, if you pick one of those days out of the week and work with your bowl on that day each week. This can be like when you cleanse and re-anoint your bowl, add or remove items, mix your bowl around, really anything that has to do with your bowl for any amount of time that you choose. It could be like, I'm going to spend two minutes working with my bowl, or you could, you know, if you have extra time, I'm going to spend 20 minutes working with my bowl. Again, it's, there's no one way or a right or wrong way to do it. And when it comes to prosperity bowls, I decided I would share something. I'm going to put it on our socials as well, but 
this is a bowl that I create often when I'm trying to manifest prosperity. And this is something that I feel like works really well for me. I've had amazing success with it. And so I thought I'd share it. This spell actually came from my friend Brody. She found it and sent it to me. I don't even remember when she sent it to me. It's been a while now, but so thank you, Brody. (laughs) I love you so much. But this spell, like she found it online and obviously credited in our source material, But this spell is amazing and I love it. And I do it a lot. Essentially what I do is I do this in my cauldron and I pull the King of Pentacles out of my spell deck along with the King of Wands. The King of Pentacles is great to use in prosperity and abundance spells because he is considered the master of prosperity and the harvest and he's a master of determination and abundance. So he's great to use in these sort of spells. I always use a yellow candle for prosperity, but of course you can use a green candle if you'd like. Yellow is closest to gold to me. And so I associate that with prosperity. I also use chamomile star anise, which we don't have it listed in the botanicals that we talked about already, but it's often used for luck, prosperity, and protection. You know, I knew that and I didn't even think about it for that portion. Yeah. Because I think like when I was researching it, I never saw it in there but I knew that Sarnis was tied to that. So, right. It's crazy just it to is weird. think about <laughs> like all the different correspondences of different yeah. plants. Also cinnamon and magically just draws wealth to you. And we've already talked about this on the podcast about, you know, blowing cinnamon into your doorway at the beginning of the month. So I also use cinnamon, allspice to attract money to me, mint to attract money and success basil to attract the sweet, aka the positivity, and repelling against the bitter, aka negativity. I also use spare change, and then I'll add more as I've got the spell ongoing. And then I use crystals as well, and I put them in my cauldron while I'm performing the spell. So I use pyrite for motivation and willpower, and it also helps with confidence in manifesting the goals you set for yourself. Tiger's eye, like quartz, it amplifies the energies of the other crystals in your bowl. Citrine to speed up prosperity coming into my life. And green adventuring, which is one of the luckiest crystals for wealth and opportunity. So I definitely make sure that's in my cauldron. And then also I write on a bay leaf my intention for this prosperity bowl. And I'll put that in there as well. And like I said, This spell is amazing. I'll post pictures on our socials of a spell that I've put together based on this a few months back. It's amazing. And if you're wanting to manifest abundance and prosperity, use this spell because it works. So outside of that, you could just cook with ingredients that correspond to prosperity and infuse your food with your manifestation intentions and encourage wealth and prosperity that way. It's one of my (laughs) chosen ways. I like to spend my time in the kitchen using ingredients that have different meanings, both medicinally and magically. So that's a super easy way. There's no, like you just use your own ingredients. Like we've given you a whole list of correspondences. You can go bake bread and add some of those herbs to it. And it's delightful. You get delightful bread in the end too. Mm -hmm. And then also one of the things that I found, I haven't done this yet, but I thought it was amazing. And I thought you would love this, Tiffany, a basil bath. I know you are a slut for... (laughs) I love my baths. (laughs) I took one last night. (laughs) I was like, I don't care if it's 1030 at night. I'm going to take myself at least an hour long bath. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So you are going to be all over this basil bath. Yeah. Essentially how you do it is you rough chop basil, leaving some leaves whole, like off to the side. But for the most part, you take a bunch of basil, you rough chop it. And then the ones that you leave aside, the leaves that you leave whole, you're going to pick those out based on like the ones that remind you the beautiful leaves that remind you of bills or notes or whatever currency that you use set those aside and then the ones that you've rough chopped you're going to pour boiling water over that basil and let it steep and then once it's cooled you strain out the the basil the chopped basil and then you add that liquid to your bath and Mm -hmm. then float the leaves that remind you of bills and notes all throughout your bathtub and visualize yourself swimming in cash. Isn't that cool? I'm down for that. It sounds amazing. I'm doing it this week. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Um, So then you'll let the water drain. Like once you're done with your bath and you're done with your whole meditation in the bath and your manifestation work, 
you're going to let the water drain and allow yourself to air dry. And what I read about this is you're not supposed to dispose of the leaves that are in the bathtub. You're supposed to, you know, because basically like if you're disposing these leaves, it's supposed to represent throwing away cash. Okay. So you're going to want to leave them either in the tub, which I thought, no, I will not do that. <laughs> um, but, or you can remove them and place them in a bag or like a muslin cloth or like a cheesecloth or something and reserve them until your spell is taken effect. And then you can dispose them back to the earth. I wonder if you could also add them to a prosperity bowl. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Probably. Do you like a, like a basil bath and then do a prosperity bowl afterwards. Mm-hmm. And then That'd like, you know, let them dry out all before you put them in there, obviously, because you don't want a bunch of water in there, but mm-hmm. put them in your, you can put them in a little sachet in your bowl. Mm-hmm. Boom. Perfect. That is amazing. I can't wait to do it. I have basil in the garden right now. So something that I found really cool in my research for anyone who's into feng shui, there is a lot of ties to prosperity within feng shui. So the Southeast corner of the home is the area considered to be wealth and prosperity. So in those areas, you want to avoid energy blocks or clutter. And if your bathroom is in that area, you want to keep your toilet lid and your drains closed when they're not in use to keep prosperous energy from flowing out of your home. Avoid keeping a trash can in there if your bathroom is in the Southeast area. And then it's good to add a prosperity symbol like coins, dollar bills, or even like the Chinese prosperity dragon to help energize those spaces. Add something purple to symbolize wealth since purple is the color of wealth in feng shui. Gold is also associated with money and green is the color of growth and abundance in feng shui. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then if you look more into like folk prosperity traditions in folklore, it said that you should carry a carob seed in your wallet or your purse to bring prosperity to you. You can plant myrtle or lemon verbena in your garden for long lasting prosperity. If you see change on the ground, you're supposed to pick it up and it's supposed to like bring other wealth to you because you've picked it up and now it's considered like lucky. And then eating lentil soup, especially if you eat it on New Year's, is believed to bring prosperity, which I thought this was funny because we didn't eat lentil soup, but every New Year's we did cabbage, which I think you mentioned earlier in the correspondences, yes. and black eyed peas in a soup. I love black eyed peas. Me too. Oh well, love and I love cabbage too. So yeah. we would have like a soup. It was like hamburger meat, black eyed peas, cabbage, and like some other root vegetables, which I think you also mentioned root vegetables earlier, but that's what we would eat on New Year's Eve going into New Year's day for like luck and prosperity. So. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. So that's perfect. We always ate black eyed peas. Yeah. Um, but I think that's like a general, do. everyone believes like black eyed peas bring you luck in the new year, but. Mm-hmm. And I, well, I love that you said like the pickup change that you come across because it reminds me of that little saying that we always know, find a penny, pick it up all day mm-hmm. long. You'll have good luck. Yep. Yep. I still do that. Me too. Even if it's on heads or tails, I don't give a shit. I'm picking it up. So I will say when I was thinking about research for this, I was like, oh, I should do a prosperity bowl. Like once my office gets put back together because it's in shambles right now while we (laughs) finish these floors in it. But just thinking about it that day, I was out with Alexis and we were walking through St. Louis on Del Mar and I found a hundred dollar bill on the ground. What? Yeah. I was like, is that a hundred dollar bill? And I picked it up and I was like, this cannot be real. And she was like, it's real bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So I hadn't even done anything. I was just thinking about it. Like I just Mm -hmm. thought it out into the universe. And then it was like, here's a hundred dollars. And I was like, Thank you universe. Right. Oh my God. But also my windshield got cracked that day. So I text Anthony and I was like, uh, Hey, I just found a hundred dollars on the ground. Also the windshield is cracked. And he was like, are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) Put that towards your windshield. Also a hundred (laughs) dollars. I know. I know. That's amazing. It just goes to show you how powerful our minds are. Yeah. Again, the universe just like wants to work with us, speaking just, it out into existence and mm-hmm. staying positive and, you know, believing that you're worthy of these things just mm-hmm. goes to show it really works. It does. Like we talked about in the last episode, it was nice having an episode that there was actual scientific research that we could share. There's not a lot of scientific research on this, but there are a lot of accounts that it actually works. It does work. Love it.
That's it for this episode of Get and Loser, We're Doing Witchcraft. You can find our source material for this episode linked in the show notes. If you loved this episode, we would be forever thankful if you leave us a five-star review on wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you really love the show and want more Get and Loser content, check out our Supercast link provided in the show notes or search the Supercast website for Get and Loser, We're Doing Witchcraft. There you can purchase a membership to our podcast and obtain exclusive like getting episodes early, shoutouts on the show, access to our Ask Me Anything form, our monthly newsletter, a promo code for merchandise, and more. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Get and Witches, or email us at we're doing witchcraft at gmail.com. Check us out next week where we will talk about the magical properties of plants. Until then, blessed be witches.